Today I will be giving a tutorial on how to build a microcontroller based potentiostat using an Arduino Uno R3, two breadboards, two power supplies, a number of operational amplifiers, capacitors, and resistors. To start, I'm going to give a brief discussion on how a breadboard works. The first thing that's important to note is how it's powered. Here we can see there's a positive rail as well as a negative rail. This is where our power supply connections will be made. If we zoom in closely, we'll see that we have a number of channels that are arranged either horizontally as well as vertically. Electrical components such as capacitors, resistors, or operational amplifiers can be connected together in series or parallel by utilizing the vertical channels. I will now go over some brief circuitry examples of connecting things in series or parallel. If we consider that we have two resistors here and we want to connect them in series, I can simply add two onto our breadboard and just make sure that they're connected vertically by one channel. Our single wire here will show that we have them connected. Now if we wanted to connect two resistors in parallel, this would require us to have two vertical connections since they must be connected on either end. As you can see, I will quickly connect them together by just making sure I have a wire connecting both ends in the vertical channels. We can now familiarize ourselves with the different components that are used to assemble our potentiostat. First, we need our external power supplies, which are used by these two 9-volt batteries here. For our experiment, we will only be needing 5 volts. Next, we have the Arduino Uno microcontroller, which will take any applied values from our computer and to our breadboard. Finally, we have an additional breadboard which will serve as our common ground. Our first step will be to complete the circuit between our two batteries in order to apply negative voltages between them. This can easily be done by connecting the positive and negative terminals to each other, leaving one positive and one negative terminal ready for a connection. Now that our negative battery is supplying negative voltages and our positive will be applying positive voltages, we can simply connect our negative terminal of our one battery to the negative rail and our positive battery to our positive rail. I'll quickly zoom in here just to show that these connections are being made. Now for convenience purposes, as well as power accessibility through either end of the breadboard, we can simply take a wire and connect the positive terminal to the other positive terminal, as well as the negative terminal to the other negative terminal. Now that we have positive and negative voltages being supplied to our main breadboard, we have an additional breadboard here which will serve as our common ground. We can simply connect it to the ground on the Arduino board, but it's also important to note that a wire which will extend from the positive and negative connections between your battery must also be made to the ground. This can be done by connecting a wire from the common ground breadboard to the connection that is made between the two batteries which I showed first. Here is an overview of the potentiostat circuit that we will be assembling. Although it looks quite complicated, we will go through it together in its assembly. The first component here is the DAC or digital to analog converter. Then we have the summing amplifier, the electrochemical cell, the analog to digital converter, and the trans impedance amplifier. Starting off with the first amplifier I showed, the digital to analog converter, we're first going to want to apply power. So in the power plus channel, we are going to attach it simply to the positive rail that we have connected, and then we're going to attach the power minus to the minus rail. Since this is a voltage follower operational amplifier, we will need to attach a wire from the inverting input to the output of the op amp. We will now connect the amplifier we just constructed to the digital output of the Arduino. We'll simply use the D10 pin here and connect it to a resistor as shown in the diagram on the left. Clearly this resistor also needs to be connected to a capacitor, so we will do that as well. So we'll just add a wire from one end of the resistor to the other end of the capacitor. The other end of the capacitor is supposed to go into the ground, so we'll connect it into this breadboard as shown. Now we'll connect the capacitor with its resistor in series to the op amp. We will now construct the summing amplifier. This can be done by connecting a resistor to the output of our previous op amp, as well as in series to another resistor, which is powered by a minus 5 voltage. So we're just going to connect them without any wires and just have them physically connected together by being in the same vertical channel, like so and then we're simply going to power it to the minus 5 volt channel that we set up before. 
For the sake of time, I'm going to be speeding up the rest of the construction here, but we can see that we connect the two resistors in series to the inverting input, as well as use the resistor and capacitor in parallel to the inverting input and the output of the op amp. Next, we will assemble the electrochemical cell. This simply takes the output of the previous op amp into the non-inverting input of this op amp. Then the inverting input will act as the reference electrode and the output will act as the counter electrode. Heading to the bottom left of our circuit diagram, we will now assemble the operational amplifier connected to the analog input. This means that we will just simply take a wire from the A0 input, put it into the output of an op amp, connect it to the inverting input, and then connect the non-inverting input into the output of the next amplifier. This next amplifier is the trans impedance amplifier. It's very similar to the summing amplifier in that we have a resistor and capacitor connected in parallel to the output and inverting inputs of this op amp. And we also have the non-inverting input being connected to ground. Additionally, in the inverting input, we will have a resistor connected to the minus five volt power and we'll also have an additional wire going to our working electrode. This is noted as the IN in the circuit diagram. This is the entire circuit diagram for what we have constructed. Please note what's not shown here is that the connection between the two batteries is not connected to the common ground. Also, we don't have the leads for the working, counter, and reference electrodes, but they were specified during construction where they would be. Lastly, I'd like to give a brief overview of the Arduino IDE software as well as the code we're going to be running. Now this code was retrieved from the fabrication of a microcontroller based potentiostat paper by Gabriel Maloney in the supporting information section. So what I'm going to be showing is now that we have retrieved this code and we have it here in our software which you can simply copy and paste into a new sketch, we're going to go ahead and run it. First you'll click verify as I have just done and it's going to compile all of your code together. After it is done compiling you simply click upload. In this demonstration, you're gonna see a number of errors because currently I don't have the Arduino Potentio stack connected. However, you shouldn't see any errors and it should simply go without any issue. After it's done uploading, next what you'll need to do is you can click on the tools bar in the top left corner and then you can click an option that says serial plotter. Now, once you click on this, you'll see a number of different values that appear. It's not showing up on the screen currently due to the limitations of the screen recording software, but all these different values will tell you the current measured, the scan rate, as well as your applied potential, and any other variables that are defined in uh, the Arduino code. Now you can use the Serial Monitor tab in the bottom corner to retrieve all your text-based values in order to plot them in any software of your choice. And that'll be all for this video. Thanks for watching.